Good afternoon. Thank you for joining the Office of Research and Innovation as we partner with the Office of Sustainability, RCE North Texas, and the RCE Global Network to share the importance of education for sustainable development and an overview of sustainability resources available to researchers both locally and globally. I am Tiffany Willoughby, Assistant Director for Research Education Programs and Outreach in the Office of Research and Innovation. I will moderate today's discussion. Joining me are Mr. Philip Vauter, Ms. Magnatare, and Mr. Garakoki. Philip Vauter joined the Education for Sustainable Development Program at the United Nations University Institute for the Advanced Study of Sustainability, UNU, IAS in June of 2015. A native to Minnesota in the United States, he received an undergraduate degree in biology from Iowa State University in the United States and a postgraduate degree in environmental sciences from University of Victoria in New Zealand before returning to Minnesota to complete his PhD in conservation biology with a focus on environmental policy. Before joining UNU IAS, he worked as a research fellow at York University in Canada. In Canada, his work focused on analyzing the synergies and obstacles in linking local, regional, and national education policies to UN policy objectives. He also investigated the role of higher education institutions, promoting education for sustainable development through curriculum, research, practice, and interinstitutional networks. Philip has taught undergraduate and postgraduate courses in ecology, political science, sociology, and statistics during his graduate and professional career. Philip, the virtual mic is yours. Thank you so much for that introduction, Tiffany. And a warm greeting to everyone on the other side of the Atlantic. I'm currently based in Japan for work but stranded in Europe. So um, a good afternoon to all of you for my evening, and I will get right into it. So, so hello and welcome everyone. Um, as my introduction said, my name is Philip Botter, and I'm a ecologist by training that's ended up working in an education program with the United Nations. So a lot of you might be asking, well, what is United Nations University? So, a little bit, I'm going to talk about that as well as the networks that we work with. Then I'll move on to talking about how researchers publish with us, a little bit about our global engagements and global conferences, and then move on to how we approach funding for our different networks. So United Nations University is a global think tank organization that's headquartered in Japan. But whereas you might have campuses around your city, we have different campuses which are called institutes around the world. And what our entire university system tries to do is we are really the academic and research interface between the UN member states and what's happening in academia on the ground in a number of fields. So I get to work in the environmental sciences division, which is also based in Tokyo in addition to our headquarters. But if you're interested in human medicine and public health, you would just go to our institute that's in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. If you're interested in hydrology and soil erosion, you would probably work for our institute in Ontario, Canada. We currently have 14 institutes around the world. And if you're interested about what goes on behind the scenes in the United Nations, so this isn't the flashy bits where you see the General Assembly or the big conference meetings, but where the researchers behind the scenes please check out our website um, and you can learn about all of our institutions, including mine. So one of the things that's neat about working in the United Nations University system is that beyond working on theoretical research, a lot of our expertise goes into looking at how research and education gets applied in the field. And one of our flagship initiatives is called the Regional Centers of Expertise, or RCE, on Education for Sustainable Development, or ESD. We use a lot of acronyms in the UN, so it's a bit of alphabet soup. And what an RCE is, is it's a network of existing formal and non-formal education organizations 
that work to use education as a mechanism for enabling sustainable development. So we're talking about a lot of training programs and public awareness activities, in addition to the formal education that goes into schools and universities and community colleges. And with over 170 of these around the world, we call the entire global network of RCEs a global learning space, or simply for short, a global RCE network. A little bit about the makeup of an individual RCE. RCEs do work a lot with formal education centers like universities, as well as the school systems for the cities that they're involved with. But the, really the thing that makes an RCE unique is it also works with non-formal or in some cases informal education actors. So local governments that work with public awareness and training activities for the public, uh, private and local businesses for uh, workforce training, NGOs, uh, but also institutions like uh, parks, zoos, botanical gardens, uh, different entities that have some kind of vested interest in educating the citizens, but an education that doesn't just inform, but also transforms behavior towards moving towards a more sustainable world. So in 2005, we started with seven RCEs uh, at the beginning of what was called the Decade of Education for Sustainable Development. Uh, by the end of it, we had close to 150. And now um, looking at 2020 and beyond, we're over 170 different regional centers of expertise operating around the world uh, and the network continues to grow. So for those of you joining in the Americas, uh, there's actually a regional governance structure. Our great, great thanks to the steering committee for putting together. And uh, this governance structure for the Americas has actually grouped different projects among RCEs into four different task force. And one of these is people. So looking at sustainable development goals like gender equity, poverty and inclusiveness. Um, another category is sustainable cities and prosperities. So looking at consumption, production, energy needs. A third is planet. Uh, they work primarily on climate change, water usage and biodiversity conservation. And then a fourth one on education and well-being. So looking after education systems, public health systems, and making sure uh, hunger is addressed. But I should mention there are four other or three other regions, and uh, they all work with similar governing structures but slightly different modalities. For example, Asia Pacific, um, they work along higher education, uh, secondary education, public education, and workforce training. So different regions organize their activities along different thematic areas. So how do researchers get involved? Well, one of the big things that we do is encourage publishing from those among the research community that work actively in RCEs. So occasionally um, you will see open calls for RCEs to contribute to journals. I included one uh, on the left hand side of your screen. It's actually still open now. So if any of you are interested, um, Frontiers of Sustainability is doing an open call. We're looking at the role of human dimension in um, education for sustainable development. We also at UNU work with something called a policy brief. This is for a little different audience than a traditional academic paper. We're not targeting academics, we're actually targeting policymakers, be they at the local, national or international level. And what we try to do with these is take uh, the findings from an academic paper or a couple of them, compress them down to 2000 words into relevant points that policymakers should know in creating policy uh, on any number of topics. The third, which I think is a little interesting because we're allowed to go into a little more nuance, is we do also do a publication of books. Um, so some of the RCEs from the Americas have contributed to these and a lot of times these take the form of case studies, but also blueprints and how to actually work in tackling a sustainability challenge with a community education approach. Um, so in the slide I'm showing here, we have three RCEs from the Americas, RCE Bogota and Colombia, as well as RCEs Grand Rapids and Greater Atlanta from the States. Um, and we've had researchers from all of these institutes contribute to book chapters that we put out through a United Nations Press. 
And finally, as we try to join the 21st century, we are also working a lot with audiovisual content, uh, specifically on short videos that go up on platforms like YouTube. Um, so if you're so interested, please give our YouTube page a check. Now, when we talk about global engagement, um, we're very much about not reproducing the wheel, so or recreating the wheel. And so one of the things that we're focusing on is trying to work in our education agenda. So it's grafted onto the international agenda that UNESCO has set, uh, which has five priority action areas. Uh, one of these being accelerating local level actions through education. And that's really the big one where RCEs fit in. But RCEs also fit into the four other priority action areas. So we do have some RCEs that really work on policy advice and drafting policy for local school districts and cities. Um, we also have RCEs that work a lot with building capacity for teachers and trainers. And in addition, uh, we also work with UNESCO on the different areas of implementation. So really this latest decade a lot of the focus has shifted to national level of orientation uh, so really trying to look at national level policies on how sustainable development gets into formal education systems but also a number of other issues including communication harnessing partnerships like rces do mobiling resources monitoring and tracking progress and trends even though we are a network of communities, we also have a pretty rigorous academic component and a lot of times academic practitioners come to share their resource at an academic conference we host, uh, along with things like workshops. Uh, our latest one was hosted by RCE Scotland. They're a unique RCE in that they're actually a whole country. That's pretty unusual. Um, usually it's uh, difficult enough to get one city or one small region to work together, but occasionally we have some uh, smaller nations that have been able to pull off a national level RCE. And uh, our latest uh, conference uh, was actually held this past November. And we had a number of um, different researchers that not only presented their research, but hosted workshop and some service training exercises. So our global RCE conference tends to show up every other year. But in addition to that, each region of RCEs, um, including the America, does an annual meeting. So there's always that opportunity to present at that, in addition to other academic conferences where you feel your research would fit into. All right, so my final slide, I hope I'm not taking too much time. Um, looking at funding, especially for the Americas and the experiences our RCE partners have had, um, especially in the United States, RCEs have had much more success in looking for direct grants from federal and state agencies. For example, we had an RCE get a very good grant from NOAA. Um, federal agencies or state agencies tend to be more invested in the multiple stakeholder approach uh, than, for example, say the NSF. Um, there's also, uh, they like the, the action component of it. It's not just research, but it's research that leads to a change state that's more sustainable. Uh, we also have had some RCEs, though not often in the Americas, work with NGO partners, um, especially on developing education and training development components for the NGO work that they do, um, as well as business partners in looking at workforce training, as well as policy compliance and public outreach on sustainability initiatives. Um, Finally, one of the interesting things also from the Americas is we've had some RCEs, including a couple from the States, work with uh, foreign development partners, especially from East Asia, like Japan and South Korea's aid agencies, on implementing ESD programs in places like the Caribbean and uh, Latin America. So um, even though the United States um, is one avenue for pursuing funding. Uh, we've had a couple of really interesting projects where researchers have actually approached um, either a development bank or an overseas uh, development partner and have gotten some really interesting projects running off the ground. Uh, some of these are featured in our publications. So with that, I don't wanna take any more of your time, but I wanna thank uh, Tiffany and the rest of the team for having me today. And I'm sure I'll be around to answer any questions later on. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Philip. And actually, I would like to take just a moment to pose one question to you that the audience submitted. The question is, do RCEs currently exist in Texas? 
in Texas. Yes, indeed they do. So we have one RCE that will be featured later on today, and that is RCE North Texas. And my colleagues, Megna and Gary, will talk a little bit more about that. Um, but yes, it is one of our more active and larger RCEs in the United States. Um, we also have RCEs in South Carolina, Virginia, Vermont, Michigan, Oregon, and Georgia. Um, so the Southeast is actually pretty well represented. Um, the Midwest and the Northwest, not as much. Uh, oh, and we just added one in Honolulu, Hawaii. So um, we have a pretty active and robust community within the states um, and North Texas, uh, I strongly encourage you to check out what they're up to. Thank you for answering that audience question, Philip, and for the information that you shared with us. Next up, we have Meghna Tare. As UT Arlington's first Chief Sustainability Officer, Meghna works collaboratively to implement sustainability programs and partnerships among academic research and operational departments at UT Arlington. She has spearheaded launching a regional center of expertise for education and sustainable development goals in North Texas, a program of the United Nations University and the North Texas Food Policy Alliance. She is a TEDx speaker, was featured as the woman in CSR, awarded Women of the Decade in Corporate Social Responsibility by the Women Economic Forum, and 2020 Women in Sustainability Transformational Leader by Wells Fargo in Vision Charlotte. She graduated with an MBA in Sustainable Management, MS in Environmental Science, and MS in Chemistry. Welcome, Meghna. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Meghna Tare. I'm the Chief Sustainability Officer for UT Arlington, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity to come here and talk about the RC in North Texas. So I'm very grateful to that one person in the audience who posed that question. I hope I'm able to share a lot of information that will help you. I'm also the founder and director for RC in North Texas. And building upon the presentation that um, Philip just had, um, RC in North Texas is an initiative of the United Nations University, UNU. Uh, we, we were inspired uh, by what Philip was doing and built on the success of the other RCs, not just in the US, but uh, of the Americas. And like Philip said, it's a network of individual formal, non-formal organizations that facilitate education for sustainable development, ESD. And I think the beauty of the RCE is, is that it is focused on the regional challenges, which is why it is named the Regional Center of Expertise, um, uh, based on the challenges of the region, but it builds um, on the platform of education and training, which is why most RCs are actually embedded in academic institution. Um, and like Philip said, it can accelerate collective impacts of so many organizations who are part of the RCs for a region um, and drive the global agenda for UN um, Sustainable Development Goals and um, ESD. So the RCs actually support SDG4, which is quality education, to ensure inclusive and equitable education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Um, and um, UTA and UTD partnered for launching this RC in North Texas in 2018. Like Philip said, there are 179 RCs across the world this is not the most updated map I have, but I still wanted to show it to you to show that we literally put North Texas on the map. It's right here. So RC North Texas is recognized. Um, and the idea came about when I was um, at an AC conference in 2017 and RC Atlanta was presenting about this concept there. And you know, I came back and I thought, why can't we have something like this um, in Texas? Um, and we just went ahead from there. This is the official certificate of acknowledgement for the RC North Texas that we received in 2019 uh, by the United Nations University. And uh, my sincere uh, gratitude to Philip for helping us navigate the complicated procedure of um, getting a region certified as an RC. He was of immense help. So I also wanted to quickly show a timeline of um, how long it took for RCE 
North Texas to be established from that listening to that presentation at the AC conference in 2017. I came back, we had, you know, sort of gathered 70 stakeholders within the North Texas region um, to kind of gauge their interest in having something like this for the region. And so what we did was we had our first stakeholder meeting at, uh, it was hosted by COG, North Central Texas Council of Government in March, where we had 70 stakeholders gathered together where we did a SWOT analysis, you know, what are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the region. And um, collectively, the group picked the SDGs of focus for the region. And I will elaborate on that a little bit um, in the later slides. Then we had a second stakeholder meeting where we, you know, came up with the mission, vision, objectives, and goals for the RCE. Submitted the draft application. Um, I have a PDF of the application if anybody's interested. Um, Philip and the team got back to us uh, with the reviews, changes, edits, and we submitted the final application and then finally got approval in 2019. So it took almost a year and a half from an idea to actually getting certified as an RCE. But I must say it was worth all the effort because it really um, gave us an in-depth analysis of how RCE North Texas can be designed and what does success look like for us. So like Philip said, um, you know, um, RCEs, uh, they really focus on the implementation and advancement of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, these 17 goals for the region. And um, as part of North Texas, we decided uh, that it is impossible to work on 17 goals. None of the RCEs across the world actually work on all the 17 goals. They pick and choose the one that is more relevant to addressing the challenges for their community. Um, and that is exactly what we did. So initially we started uh, with the top three goals when we launched in 2019, which is good health and well-being, SDG3, quality education, which is the cornerstone of RC North Texas um, and all the RCEs. Uh, SDG 4 and then SDG 11, which was sustainable cities and communities, because we had a lot of um, private sector partnerships in our RCEs. And um, it was unique because I think RCE North Texas is the only uh, RCE which has a lot of private sector uh, collaboration and partnerships and stakeholders um, in the RCE. But we have come a long way from 19 to 22, and you know, based on where the world is headed, you know, I think it's important to focus on climate action. It's important to focus on industry innovation and infrastructure, and it's important to focus on um, hunger. You know, if the pandemic has taught us anything, you know, these are the things climate change, hunger and infrastructure innovation are really a necessity. So going forward, we are going to add these three SDGs um, to our mix based on the survey that we did with our stakeholders uh, middle of last year. Um, I know there are 17 SDGs and like I said, it's important, impossible to pick and choose everything, but the beauty of the SDGs is that they are interdependent. So, you know, every goal that you pick, they are all connected. So if you are working on zero hunger, it is somehow connected to sustainable cities or communities. If you're working on climate action, it connects to sustainable cities and communities and transportation um, and healthy communities. So which is why even if you pick three or four goals, which is what we have done for our RCE, it actually uh, impacts all other RCEs and you know you can incorporate and mix and match um, indicators um, and project goals into your RCE um, of interest. So um, here's a brief overview of what is the mission and the vision for RC North Texas. Uh, we have a vision of a healthy, equitable and resilient North Texas and a mission that we connect organizations to enable healthier communities, shared value and sustainable development through education, collaboration and capacity building. Um, so the RCE was formed, keeping in mind that we can support some of these things for the North Texas region, right? Capacity building, knowledge sharing, training, because we UTD and UTA are academic institutions. Um, hopefully, you know, we get a lot of faculty and researchers involved in this to create a research database. This is sort of an aspirational goal for RC North Texas, be a regional leader, have a collective impact uh, by addressing the challenges for the region, 
Um, also do stakeholder mapping, you know, who's doing what in the region, because every time you work on something, you always try to find, okay, who else can I partner with or who else can help me out? And so hopefully the RC North Texas can help with that. And obviously have a youth network. You know, we are an academic institution. We are in the business of education. And I think our first and foremost goal is to work with students and train them and educate them and motivate them to take action as they graduate from colleges and universities. This is a stakeholder mapping that we did. As you can see, uh, this was when uh, the RC in North Texas was just launched and we had three goals. We mapped all the organizations who were partners and stakeholders of the SDGs and aligned them and their work to SDG 11, 3 and 4 and you know, by the four sector NGOs, private sector, public sector and education. And as you can see by the green um, uh, pie, we really have a lot of private sector stakeholders as part of this RCE. So last year, like I said, you know, we are in uh, do capacity building and training. Last year we hosted our first summit, which was virtual, but it was a big success. We had over 200 people who attended this session uh, virtually on MS Teams, where we had the assistant UN Assistant Secretary General as a keynote speaker, Satya Tripathi, and then we had UNESCO Chair uh, for Education towards Sustainability, Charles Hopkins, um, as a second keynote. So this was a really successful event. The video for the entire event is posted on the website, and I can share it um, in the chat once I'm done with my presentation. Uh, we do a lot of educational events for the past three years since we launched in 2019. We have hosted multiple events. There's one coming up, which is tomorrow, which is a sustainability communication workshops that we are hosting in partnership with ICLE. We have over 60 members of the North Texas region, including folks from Canada who are joining the sustainability communication, communication workshops. We hosted a food dialogue, um, had a project on SDG cities challenge, um, we did this one in 2020 to support uh, the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, uh, hosted a series of webinars and presentations, which included presentations by the North Texas Food Bank and the EPA. Um, the RC Symposium uh, hosted that in, on September 16. We had a youth ambassador exchange program to foster collaboration. This, uh, this was in partnership with Dallas College and the students at Dallas College and UTD and UTA uh, hosted a food justice lecture series. Um, I think this was um, virtual because of the pandemic. Uh, <clears throat> focus on climate change, sustainability in healthcare. We even did, uh, this was pre-pandemic, we even did an RC North Texas happy hour where we invited people to come network and, you know, kind of share ideas and, um, and just, uh, you know, express the challenges that they have and see how everybody can help. And then Dallas College hosts the Sustainability Summit. Um, and that was another initiative that RC North Texas participated and partnered with them. Uh, as Tiffany mentioned, last year we launched a North Texas Food Policy Alliance, which supports the SDG to zero hunger, but it also supports education, good health and well-being and sustainable communities. You know, like I emphasized, the SDGs are all interrelated. So working on one eventually leads you uh, to the success of other SDGs as well. Again, this is a public-private partnership. We built on the success of the stakeholders of RC North Texas and added a few more including farmers and growers and grocery stores. Um, this is very unique because most of the food policy councils are embedded actually in local government. And so they are driven a little bit by the political agenda of the local government. But the NTFPA is the two percent of the policy alliances or councils that are embedded within an academic institution and driving the work on equitable food systems through collaboration and education. And um, as part of that mission, in on September 16th, we hosted a North America Local Food Dialogue on Inclusive Food System, which was a contributing dialogue to the United Nations Food Summit in partnership with USDA and ICLE. And the proceedings or the conversation of the entire dialogue is drafted into a policy paper that is shared with the Biden administration, uh, which leads to the policy implementation and design of programs to support equitable and food systems for the US. And we have another workshop or a meeting coming up 
next week on March 1st at UTA campus, which has again 60 registrations of people coming in person and including presentations from the Taste Project, North Texas Food Bank, Texas A&M, AgriLife, City of Dallas, just to name a few presenters for that event. This is a snapshot. I really love this one to show, uh, you know, the whole North Texas local food dialogue was captured in a, you know, in a creative way. Um, and then since we launched in 2019, we actually have received three awards. There was one for the Future Cities Livable Futures in 2019, which was acknowledged as a flagship project. Um, Upper Trinity River, uh, River Water Quality Report Card in 2020, which had an honorable mention. This was a project where a nonprofit organization called Trinity Coalition, based out of Fort Worth, came to us and proposed this project to be implemented under RC North Texas. And they actually funded a PhD student at UTA uh, with $10,000 towards this work for two years. And the project is so successful um, that Texan by nature, um, Laura Bush Foundation has actually picked up the work and expanding the scope of this project. And then in 2021, we received another acknowledged flagship project for the SDG City Challenge, which we implemented uh, through RC North Texas in partnership with University of Mel Melbourne in Australia and ICLE, International Council for Local Environmental Initiative. So that's about it. I had more to share, but I wanted to keep it brief um, and within the 15 minutes time frame, but I'll take any questions and Tiffany has shared our contact information. I'm happy to share. Gary and I can share any information or anything that you need after today. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Magna. Um, there are a few questions in the audience chat and I'll kind of bundle them all together. Sure. Um, additionally, I believe I found the website for Global RCE Network um, and I'm happy mm -hmm. to post that in the chat per uh, your reference during your presentation. So the sure. questions that we have are, what future events about sustainability are you hoping to plan? Are the mm -hmm. events your team plans mostly lectures or are they interactive? And mm -hmm. how can community members get more involved with RCE North Texas? Can someone volunteer? Yes, all great questions. So we have a lot of events. In fact, I'm going to steal Gary's thunder and say that UTD is actually hosting our summit for this year, November 9th and 10th at UTD. So reach out to Gary for all the information and details. It is not just presentations. We are actually going to host some interactive sessions, including workshop, uh, youth network, um, and a couple of good presentations. So yes, we would like to have more. And the idea is we engage more uh, folks from um, all the other organizations in UTD. But I think Gary is your point of contact or you, know, you can email him, you can email us. We'll add you to the distribution list. Um, and make sure that you receive all future communications, including, including a newsletter that we send out every three months. And so the upcoming newsletter is coming at the end of this, uh, at the end of March, or the first week of March. But yeah, lots of sessions. And it's all, it, I mean, we are open to ideas. If somebody thinks, for example, North Central Texas Council of Government wanted to host a workshop on sustainable cities and communities, or a workshop on how to do greenhouse gas emissions inventory, we are open to ideas. You know, this is a platform for you to advance your work. We are here to support and help. Thank you so much for that additional information and your presentation, Magna. We appreciate it. Next up is Gary Koki. Gary has led the Office of Sustainability at UT Dallas since 2018 with previous sustainability experience in higher education and municipal government. He is responsible for facilitating the integration of sustainability into campus stewardship, student life, administration, and student learning. UTD, as well as universities across the nation and the world, track the effectiveness of sustainability programs according to the Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System, administered by the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. As UTD's sustainability program has grown in recent years, UT Dallas earned AASHE STARS Gold Certification for Sustainability in 2019 for the first time in school history. 
for continued progress, Gary advocates for greater emphasis on the connection between environmental stewardship and social justice, and has adopted the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals as a basis for sustainability education and service so that students better understand the connection between our society and the environment. Gary leads regional progress towards achieving the SDGs as co-founder and co-director for RCE North Texas, recognized by United Nations University as a regional center for expertise on education for sustainable development and advocate for sustainability in higher education as a member of the executive committee for the Texas Regional Alliance for Campus Sustainability. Gary believes that sustainability is a transdisciplinary field to which all can contribute, and he is always happy to grab a cup of coffee, even virtually, to discuss ideas for collaboration. Gary, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you all for having me. Um, my name is Gary Cocky. I am the Director for Sustainability here at UTD, and what we're going to do is um, I'm going to take what Philip has introduced with the global resources and complement what Meghna introduced with the regional resources and discuss uh, sustainability initiatives very locally at UTD. Um, what we're seeing on our screen right now is um, a, an excerpt from the uh, University Strategic Plan, which does prioritize sustainability as a strategic theme and um, I'm not going to read through our goals as a university, but um, I would encourage those of you on this uh, webinar to do so. And um, many of these goals, if not all, are directly related to sustainability. And so my, my goal and my position as Director of Sustainability is to elevate these goals and to serve as a resource to our community. But um, in order to talk about where we are, um, I think it's important that we we talk about our roots. I'm going to speak a little bit about the growth that we've already realized. I'm going to talk about the future and the direction that we are headed. And then I'm going to provide uh, resources for faculty as well. So to speak to our roots a little bit, the Office of Sustainability at UT Dallas began about a decade ago. It began as an initiative um, rooted in operations which is actually, I think, a, a really great place for a sustainability program to begin. It's um, a demonstration of how we walk the talk of sustainability, and I'm proud of how we do walk that talk. We have 1.28 million square feet of LEED certified space. We have over 15 acres of pollinator habitat. We've composted over a half a million pounds of food waste, and we have a, a robust recycling program, including single stream, uh, single stream and special stream recycling. As we've progressed, um, the scope of sustainability in higher education has grown and the scope of sustainability here at UTD has grown as well. Um, we now uh, track our, our progress according to the standard provided by the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education and the STARS report that they provide. They categorize sustainability into four categories, and so we've expanded from our roots and operation to now try to impact really work across the university. Uh, the other categories that we prioritize are engagement, which really I, I consider to have two subcategories. There's student engagement, where we have all sorts of programs for service learning and to make sure that we are um, signaling our values to our students to provide context to their education in co-curricular spaces. And then public engagement with initiatives like RCE North Texas, where the university is taking leadership on regional issues. The next category is academics. Um, that's what we're doing in the classroom and what we're doing in our research labs. Um, after all, like Magna said, we are in the business of education. And I think that in the business of education, we're at a very privileged point where we are training the next generation of leaders. And we've, I believe that the, the application of their education in many cases is going to be towards sustainability. And so I, I work very closely with the academic folks to prioritize sustainability in the classroom and in the research lab. And then finally, we have administration, which is what are we doing at our university policy level to ensure an equitable, environmentally friendly and accessible campus 
We also have a faculty chaired sustainability committee, which has been working over the past couple of years to um, lead the way on addressing single use plastics on campus. And um, we're very close to hopefully uh, presenting proposals that will make UTD a leader in that area. As we've grown in the scope of what we do for sustainability, we've adopted a mission statement and a vision statement to, to make sure that we are uh, communicating our intent to our community. Um, I'd like to take a moment just to, to highlight the vision statement. Our vision is creating a better world by connecting education and expertise to principles of sustainability. And I think that vision statement um, speaks uh, very clearly to what we try to do. Um, we provide context and meaning to the education that we are providing students through the lens of sustainability. And then with the expertise as we have across disciplines on our college campus, um, I believe that issues of sustainability and thought leadership towards sustainable solutions um, is, a, is a vital role for UTD as an institution. As we've grown over the, the past couple of years, we have joined our uh, aspirational peers set by the strategic plan to become a gold certified university according to the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. And um, the picture on the right is just a, a fun brag point that um, that is actually UTD students at one of our campus apiaries. And that is a screen capture from the 2019 annual report put out by AISHI. And so um, I actually just went to the report happened to see UTD students on there and it was a surprise to me, but um, that does uh, the gold certification, I think is a testament to the good work happening across the university. And um, I think it's a, the, the fact that AISHI put UTD onto the cover of their annual report is an acknowledgement of, of the, that recognition. So that's where we started, what we've done. And so um, I'd like to speak a little bit about where I see us headed before I, I get into the resources that we have for researchers. So as I, as I mentioned, I believe that these sustainable development goals, the set of 17 principles that we have from the United Nations, um, they are the application of our education. If we reconcile the eight colleges that we have across this university, and we reconcile the, um, the, the, the lessons that we hope our students are learning in the classroom with these 17 goals. I believe that there is a very close overlap with what we hope students to leave UTD knowing. As we look at these 17 goals, um, we also um, can, can reconcile the expertise that we have across this university and the thought leadership that we're able to provide towards this application. Um, these 17 goals are, are the issues that this generation needs to uh, be more successful in solving than previous generations. Um, a message that I like to, to call out specifically is that sustainability is a transdisciplinary field. Um, we need the involvement of engineers and scientists, absolutely. We also need humanities, political science and social science. Everybody has a role to play. When we talk about issues of sustainability, we're working right at the intersection of environmental stewardship, social justice, and economic and political policy. And so with that, everybody needs to be a part of this conversation. The more people that are in this conversation, the better those solutions will be. Progress requires that collaboration. And then one thing that I've noticed over the past two years as we've wrestled with the pandemic is that COVID, the racial justice movement that we've seen, and the climate crisis have brought the urgency of these sustainability issues into a much sharper focus. Um, we've seen how the pandemic rippled out and had uh, impacts related to access to education. It had impacts um, to our environmental stewardship and it rippled out in many different ways every single one of these sustainable development goals it, it affects the next one and we need to we need to focus our broad expertise in this direction so to speak to the resources that we offer for researchers is I, I put them into three categories the first category that i'm going to speak about is public engagement so I am a co-director of the Regional Center for Expertise with uh, Megna. And so as hopefully you found information 
that you would um, find useful and initiatives that you would like to plug into either through Philip's presentation or through Megna's presentation, please reach out to me. I can get you plugged into the RCE Global Resources. I can also get you plugged in to initiatives through RCE North Texas. Magna spoke about the broad stakeholder engagement that we have through RCE North Texas. We have uh, connections with uh, many industry partners, higher education across the region, K through 12, nonprofit and local government. So as researchers are working on solutions that would either A, be applicable for these different industries, or as um, you find partnership opportunities, I can be that connecting point for researchers. We also work very closely with the North Central Texas Council of Governments. The North Central Texas Council of Governments has um, working groups related to most issues of sustainability, um, air quality, water conservation. And so as researchers are interested in these topics, you can plug in through the Office of Sustainability to be part of the regional conversation through the North Central Texas Council of Governments. UTD is a member of the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. And with that, every, um, every member of our community with a UTD domain email can log in. You can access uh, resources related to sustainable curriculum development, um, sustainable research, sustainable student engagement. And um, with that, if there are um, folks that are interested in uh, developing a sustainable curriculum, um, there are workshops that can be facilitated through ACHE as well, where we can train faculty on how to integrate sustainability into curriculum. We also um, have community engaged learning initiatives. Um, I have the privilege of teaching a, a community engaged learning class focused on the sustainable development goals um, through the RCE and through the networks that we have. If there are other faculty that are interested in giving students a hand on experience um, through a community engaged experience, uh, then you can work through the Office of Sustainability to be introduced to partners. And then there are so many opportunities for citizen science. Um, we've utilized uh, bio blitzes where students use iNaturalist to document the, the flora and fauna on campus. And so we're able to contribute to science as we track the changes in our uh, ecosystem as we're being affected by climate change and other environmental stressors. The, the next topic that I wanted to speak about is um, living labs. In our campus master plan, we actually called out that a priority of uh, UT Dallas is to use our campus as a resource for research, student learning, and public demonstration. And to that point, um, I can be your point of contact. I report through facilities and economic development and make sure that we are able to, to use campus for your benefit and for the benefit of students. We have examples, um, Dr. David Lari, who has developed um, air quality sensors that can be um, uh, cheaply deployed with high precision measurements. And the, we're going to be deploying 13 of his sensors on campus. He's already deployed some throughout North Texas. And the idea is that um, we're going to have the first hyperlocal air quality network in North Texas, prioritizing environmental justice because oftentimes um, the areas where we measure air quality are not the areas where air quality is the poorest. And oftentimes where air quality is the poorest, um, that is impacting vulnerable communities. And so with this, it's a really exceptional um, example of how UTD thought leadership using campus as a living laboratory is really creating a, a positive outcome for members of our community. We're also working with researchers to um, test a soil probe using an electrochemical uh, probe. We are partnering with a researcher that's able to use satellite data to help with uh, leak detection on campus and uh, irrigation efficiency. We've partnered for biodiversity assessments, food waste audits, um, I've used actually student leadership to help with um, our carbon footprint calculations. Um, other ideas I think that could be helpful for students would be to teach students the principles of green building through participation in lead audits as well. Um, really, we're, we're only limited by the ideas that researchers have, and this is an open invitation for you to reach out with your ideas on how our campus can be a tool for uh, your research and for student learning. 
And then finally, the, the, the last piece that I would like to highlight is that um, we have many student orgs. Uh, we have eco rep student workers in our office. We have sustainability service honors programs. We have service learning programs around our trees, around our pollinators. We have a student farm called the Eco Hub where students are um, utilizing organic farming techniques to grow food and provide that food for food insecure communities. We've become a, uh, a recognized partner garden with the North Texas Food Bank. And um, there are all sorts of opportunities for how researchers could utilize all of these student groups and these campus facilities for uh, the benefit of your research. And so again, I, I will put the, the invitation to researchers to reach out and let me know where your work aligns with sustainability. And I would love to find collaboration with you. And with that, I will display my contact information. There's um, a link to our website, which I invite all of you to take a look at. And please do reach out, be in touch. Um, I look forward to collaborating with you. And hopefully I'll also see you in November as UTD will be hosting the RCE North Texas Summit at the Davidson Gundy Alumni Center. Thank you Thank so much, you so Gary. Much, Gary. There are there a few are questions in the chat for you. The first one is, what is the benefit of an engineer and sociologist, for example, working together on sustainable research? Good question and one that I love to answer. Um, and so it's, I'm, I am a, a STEM person by education and through the course of my professional career, I've grown to um, not only respect the role of uh, social sciences and humanities and sustainability, but um, to perhaps say that they are the most integral part of progress. Um, I would argue that we are more limited by our culture to pursue solutions and our will to see them through than we are the technologies and the policies that we have access to now. So with the example of an engineer working with a sociologist, um, what I would love to see is how we can take the technological advancement that we're developing in an engineering laboratory and how we can work with um, communities such that it is received and implemented in a useful way. And I think there are examples like that across the spectrum where if we have researchers that are working on climate change, let's put them with the political science and we can talk about how does urban policy need to evolve as we deal with the realities of a changing climate. Excellent, thank you. Um, next question, what is the biggest challenge you've had with setting up the sustainable, sustainable initiatives such as the recycling initiative you mentioned? There, there's not a single challenge. Um, the, to me, sustainability leadership is the business of better ideas. And so with that, um, what you need is a, a person that is able to take that leadership role to understand the different um, mechanics within the institution to understand the field in which they operate and to see projects from beginning to end. Um, the thing that I've noticed with sustainability is that um, mo almost everyone can get on board. We understand that we need to protect the environment, that we need to protect societies. Um, many people show up with that in their, in their heart, then perhaps do not have a complete view of what sustainability should be as a, as a transdisciplinary field. But um, to give students in particular the experience of going from just the ideas that we learn in the classroom to um, building out a plan, building consensus around that plan and ultimately implementing a project. To me, that is what sustainability leadership is. And so each initiative um, needs to be kind of thought of as uh, an independent project that needs a project, project manager that understands what needs to happen to turn it into fruition. Absolutely excellent answer to that question. And I also note that each of the speakers today, Philip Magna and yourself, have, have highlighted the importance of educating the community and anyone interested in, in becoming involved with uh, the sustainability initiative. One final question, and I would love for each of you to weigh in on it. Um, 
partially anyway, this one's specific to UTD, but growing food and keeping track of flora on campus sounded really cool. Can each of you tell us what the favorite part of your line of work is? I'll start. Um... So the, the privilege of working in higher education is working with students. And um, I love that the question points directly towards um, growing food. Um, and so for one, we have a, a you know very international student body. Many of the students come from a, a, an agrarian uh, 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 background. And so having the kind of the connection with agriculture on campus um, is very meaningful for students. And then as I'm talking about sustainability as a transdisciplinary field, um, students get a hands on experience with um, organic gardening. Many of them are learning to use a shovel. They find their first earthworms. They learn about farming. They build community with the other students that they're working with. And then to pair that with the mission of providing that food for food insecure communities, um, that opens up the door to the social economic and political uh, dimensions of sustainability. And so, um, and, and it makes it very tangible because um, oftentimes these social and economic concepts can feel abstract, but whenever you're able to see the food and understand in a tangible way, how it, um, how it brings together environmental, social and economic aspects, it's very rewarding and to see what an individual student is able to take from that process. Thank you, Gary. And Meghna, um, can you tell us what your favorite part of working in sustainability is? I think I like working with students a lot, but I also like the public-private partnership that establishes um, uh, the room for growth and also innovation. I think I really love that, which is why I really love the RCE model because it brings academic institutions and nonprofits and grassroots organizations, public sector, private sector, because often we encounter that people operate in silos and everybody is doing their own thing. But um, I love bringing people together and working um, on collective ideas. So uh, uh, that's my favorite part. <laughs> Thank you, Meghna and Philip. Well, I loved everything Meghna and Gary mentioned, but I think for me, the really exciting part about working in sustainable development is it's not only generating a knowledge base, which I think is really critical, but I also get to work a lot with implementation. Um, I not only get to see what ideas people can come up with, but I get to see how they actualize them in the real world. And even though there's some bumps along the way, uh, to me, that's a lot more invigorating than just living inside uh, a future of what ifs. It's to actually try and work with communities that are actually trying to make that. Um, so I think that's one of the things that I find most rewarding and exciting about my work uh, in that I actually get to work with communities that want to implement instead of just think about implementing. <laughs> Excellent. Philip, Magna, and Gary, thank you for sharing your time and knowledge with the attendees today. Audience members interested in additional Office of Research and Innovation events, please follow us on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our newsletter. Feel free to use your phone to scan the QR code on this slide or follow the links posted in the chat. Thank you so much and have a nice afternoon.